Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to answer one of the Java interview questions. That is, write a Java program to demonstrate for loop. Let me answer this question with practical demonstration. It is a very simple question, guys. So we can actually write a Java program to print some numbers from 1 to 10, etc. Or we can even collect a number from the user. Let's say if the user enters 100, we can print the number from numbers from 1 to 100. Like that, we can make the program look better. But, uh, you know, uh, to demonstrate a for loop, it can be a very simple program. Or you can create some complex programs and explain in the interviews. As part of this uh, session, as part of answering this question, I'll try different varieties of for loops. Okay, for varieties of ways we can demonstrate for loop to the interviewer when you get this kind of question in the interview. So I'll start with the basic one and I'll go to the advanced one. Okay, so for that I'll switch to Eclipse ID and create a new class. I'll just create a new class. I'll just name this class as uh, class 10. Class 10. With main method I'll create. So inside the main method, inside the main method, I'm going to create, let's say some number, I'll say int number is equal to, if I give 10 here, and I'll write like this, for int i is equal to 1, i less than or equal to 10, i plus plus, okay? I can write the code like this, guys. For int i is equal to 1, i less than or equal to 10, i plus plus. So the numbers from 1 to 10 will be printed in this. Here, instead of giving 10, right, I'll give the number here. Whatever the value you give here, up to that, the numbers will be printed. It will start from 1 until the value that we will reach. System.out.println. System.out.println i. Okay. Now run this code and observe that the values from 1 to 10 will be printed. It will start from 1 and it will go till 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is how we have to write the program. When you get that question, like write a Java program to demonstrate for loop. This is a very simple program I have written, guys. What if I would like to collect this input from the user? So in that case, I'll write, I'll, I'll create an object for the scanner class. Scanner scanner is equal to new scanner. Scanner scanner is equal to new scanner. Control shift O. And here I'll provide system.in. System.in. And after that, I'll write down, I'll ask the user to enter any number. Enter any number. Okay. When the user enters the number, I'll collect the number into this num variable. By using this object reference, scanner dot object reference of the scanner class, scanner dot next int, I will say, next int, I will say, the number will go here. And for int i is equal to 1, i less than or equal to this particular number, whatever the user enters. Till that, this for loop will iterate and print, guys. At the end, I have to close the scanner object so that memory leak won't happen. Simply say close and run the code. Right click run as Java application. So here it allows the user to enter a number. If I give the number as let's say 96, up to 96, the numbers will be printed starting from 1 to 96, the numbers will be printed. You see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, till 96, the numbers got printed. Whatever the number the user enters, till that number, the numbers will be printed starting from 1. Okay. So this is how you can write a sample program to, to demonstrate a for loop when you get this kind of question in the interviews. But there are many other things that you can do with this, guys. Okay. For example, you can even use for loop to uh, print the numbers in a reverse way. That is uh, from number to i less than reverse way also you can do. Okay, Whatever the number the user enters from that to i should be greater than or equal to 1 till 1 only. Okay, Less than 1 it will come out of the loop. i minus minus I will say. In this case, what will happen? This whatever the number the user enters right from that it will start. For example, if the user enters 96, then 95, 94, 93, till 1, it will be printed, guys. Reverse way, you can print the numbers, okay? Enter any number, let's say I'll give some like, like 15, you see, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, reverse way. Like this also, we can write the logic, guys. Okay, Like earlier also, we can write the logic if you want to... Uh, print the numbers using for loop in a reverse way, you can use that. Like there are many programs you can demonstrate, but uh, these are few things that I will demonstrate whenever I get this kind of simple question in the interviews, uh, where the interviewer, interviewer is asking me to write a Java program to demonstrate for loop. So this much of logic is enough, guys. You don't have to go beyond that. Either try to print the numbers from 1 to 1 less than or equal to number I will write. I plus plus. Okay, this will print the numbers from whatever the user enters. 
till that number from one to that particular number it will be printed okay fine now so that's all for this session guys hope you got the answer for this question with practical demonstration in this session so that's all for this session thank you bye bye hello all welcome to this session in this session i am going to answer one of the java interview questions that is write a java program to print stars using for loop where the number of stars printed should be equal to the number of row number let me demonstrate this program in a practical way for that i'll switch to this eclipse id here i'm going to create a new class i'll just name this class as let's say class 11 some random name with main method i'll create so what do we have to achieve is something like this okay so i'm going to print this program is going to print something like this and just put uh, some you know inside the comments i'll provide what to do and all okay here let's say if there are five rows in the first row only in the row one only one star should be there in the second row we should have two stars in the third row we should have three stars in the fourth row we should have four stars in the fifth row we should have five stars depending on the number of rows the number of stars in that particular row should be equal to the number of the row in the first row single star should be there in the second row two stars should be there in the third row three stars should be there in the fourth row four stars fifth row five stars if you have 10 row 10th row 10 star should be there okay that's what we have to achieve guys so how to write the code so that uh, this kind of uh, thing will be achieved okay so number of stars in the program should be equal to the number of rows okay so this kind of thing we want so we can do one thing that is we can get the number of rows from the user as an input okay we can get the number of rows how many rows you want to print this stars you, you can get it from the user scanner scanner is equal to new scanner and here inside this scanner write down system dot in system dot in and say control shift control shift o and import this after importing this scanner class from java dot detail package write a print statement asking the user in the output during the run time the user will enter how many rows he or she want the stars to be printed okay so how uh, enter the number of rows enter the number of rows to be printed okay number of rows to be printed like that if the user will give five rows means five rows will be stars will be printed in the five rows if the user give will give 10 means stars will be printed in the 10 rows like that okay so here here i'll write down scanner dot next int so here i'll say int rows okay i'll collect the rows from the user now i need to write a logic here depending on the rows i am getting for int i is equal to 1 i'll start with one first row let's say okay i i less than or equal to the number of rows that is rows i plus plus me call it i plus plus this is what i will write so that i uh, how many rows means that many rows it will go okay now in that inner for loop you write int j is equal to 1 j less than or equal to i j plus plus okay if the uh, row is 1 here in the in that first row how many stars should be printed only one that's why i am writing the logic like j less than or equal to 1 okay so now i'll explain the logic guys don't worry here i'll write system dot out dot print ln here i'll print instead of print ln i'll use print statement because it should print multiple stars in the same line so in the double quotes i'll give asterisk symbol okay asterisk symbol should be printed guys and if you run this code all the stars will be printed in the same line so after the for loop you have to write system dot out dot print ln that's it empty print ln statement is enough there i'll just reduce the number of lines here so that uh, you can see all the code uh, at a place here also i'll remove the lines so that you can see the code properly okay i think this is good this is good so far so here what i am doing guys i am collecting the input from the user that is number of rows here for int i will be zero i will be one sorry the initial value of i is what one i is one here i is one i'll just simply say i one current value of i is one 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 less than number of rows let's suppose that the user has entered five as the number of rows one less than or equal to five is true right one less than or equal to five is true we'll go inside the for loop inside that for loop when i became one the inner for loop j is one j also became J also become one here. J is also one. Okay, J is also one. I is one, and then J is one. Then after that, one less than or equal to I. 
current value of i is 1, 1 equal to i is 2. So we'll go inside that asterisk, single star will be printed. Next, j will become 2. Next, j will become 2. 2 less than or equal to 1 is false. So we'll come out of the for loop. Only one star will be printed. Okay. After that, we'll, uh, here print statement is there. So uh, after this end of the inner for loop, when it comes outside, right, it will go to the new line where I will become 2, guys. When I will become 2. So 2 less than or equal to 5. True again. We'll go inside that when i is 2. Here int j is equal to 1. 1 less than. Currently, j became 1. 1 less than or equal to 2 is true. Current value of i is 2. So 1 less than or equal to 2 is true. So here one star will be printed. Again, here print ln is not there. Print is there in the same line. j plus plus will happen. j will become 2. 2 less than or equal to 2 again true. Again, one more star will be printed in the same line. So in the second row, how many stars got printed? Two stars. When j becomes 3, 3 less than or equal to 2 will become false. We'll come out of the inner for loop and we'll go to the new line. And here i will become 3. 3 less than or equal to 5 is true. Come again. Here j is equal to 1 will become 1 less than or equal to 3. Star will be printed. Then j will become 2. Again, 2 less than or equal to 3. One more star will be printed in the same line. j will become 3 because of j plus plus. 3 less than or equal to 3 is also true. One more star will be printed in the three, third line. Okay, Three stars. In the third row, we have three stars. When j becomes 4, 4 less than or equal to 3 will become false and will come out and will go to the new line. Finally, then i will become 4. 4 less than or equal to 5 is true. We'll go inside. Here, j will become 1 again. j is equal to 1. 1 less than or equal to 4. True again. 1 star will be printed. j plus plus j will become 2. 2 less than or equal to 4. True. Another star will be printed in the same line. j will become 3. 3 less than or equal to 4, uh, 4 is again true. The same star will be printed in the same line. Okay. Another star will be printed. j will become 4. 4 less than or equal to 4 is also true. Fourth star will be printed in the same line. And finally, when j becomes 5, 5 less than or equal to 4 is false. We'll come out of the inner for loop. We'll go to the new line. Then I will become 5. 5 less than or equal to 5 is again true. We'll go inside that. Again, j will become 1. 1 less than or equal to i means 5. Current value of i is 5. 1 less than or equal to 5 is true. First star will be printed. j will become 2. 2 less than or equal to 5. Again, star will be printed. j will be 3. 3 less than or equal to 5. Third star will be printed in the same line. j will become 4. 4 less than or equal to i. Fourth star will be printed in the same line. 5. Fifth star will be printed in the same line. And when j becomes 6, 6 less than or equal to 5 is false. Finally, we'll come out of the inner for loop after printing 5 stars in the fifth row. And we'll go to the new line. And here, i will become 6. 6 less than or equal to 5 is false. We'll come out of the for loop. This is how the program will work when the user enters the rows as 5. Okay. So here, at the end of the, at the, end of the code, you write down, just close this object, guys, so that this warning will go off. Copy this uh, scanner object and simply say dot close. Okay, just close it as a good practice or best practice. You have to do that. Now run the code and observe that whatever the number the user enters, the number of rows, accordingly, the stars in each row will be equal to the number of rows. Okay, so if I give five means total, how many rows of stars came? First row, second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row. In the first row, only one star is there. In second row, two stars are there. In third row, third star is there. three stars. Fourth row, four stars. Fifth row, five stars. If I run it again and if I give some number like, you know, uh, let's say 10, very big number will, uh, 10 rows will come and the number of stars in that particular row will be equal to the number of rows. I mean, uh, number of the row. That is, in the first row, only one star will be the second row, two stars, third row, three stars, fourth row, four stars, fifth row, five stars, sixth row, six stars, seventh row, seven stars, eighth row, eight stars, ninth row, nine stars, and tenth row, ten stars. Like this, guys, you can give any type of number Okay, any number based on that, that but that particular number of rows will be printed and uh, the stars in that particular row will be equal to the row number. Okay, the number of stars in that particular row will be equal to the row number. So hope guys with practical demonstration, you got the answer for this uh, question. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello all. Welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to answer one of the Java interview questions that is Write a Java program to demonstrate while loop. Let me answer this question with practical demonstration. For this, I'll switch to Eclipse IDE and create a new class by giving some random name, let's say class 12. And here I'll create a main method. Inside the main method, I'm going to write some code for demonstrating the while loop. 
So first we need a variable guys. You can declare the variable. We can give the variable name like a is equal to one, or you can also say c is equal to one or count is equal to one or counter is equal to one up to you. I'll go with count. Okay. Int count is equal to one. I'll start with the while keyword with circular brackets and starting of the while loop and ending of the while loop. In this, I have to provide the condition count less than or equal to five until the count is less than or equal to five you have to go with this loop. Okay, you have to iterate this loop. Here, write down system.out.println, system.out.println, count colon plus, plus this particular way, count, okay? Like this, you print it out. For every iteration, it will print count colon. In the first iteration, when count is equal to one, one less than or equal to five, one less than or equal to five is true. So here count colon one will be printed. And after that, if you don't provide this count plus plus will not, if you don't increment this count by one, then what will happen if I don't do this? For example, if I comment this again, count will be one only again, it will print count is equal to one in the next iteration. Also, the condition will be true. Count will be one. It will print. It will go to the infinite loop. That's why we have to specify this count plus plus. If you don't specify this count plus plus, this while loop will go to the in, in, infinite loop. Let me show you how that it will go into the infinite loop now. Count is equal to one count. It's keep on printing. You see, it's not going to count two, count three like that. I want to print from one to five. One to five, I want to print. So every time after printing this, I have to increment the value of count by one so that two less than or equal to five will happen. So count two will happen. Then count will become three here. Three less than or equal to five is true. Count is equal to count colon three will be printed. Count plus plus count will become four. Four less than or equal to five is still true. Count four will be printed. Count plus plus count will become five. Five less than or equal to five is true again. Count is five will be printed. Again, count will become six. Six less than or equal to five is false. We'll come out of the while loop. This is how we have to write the logic is run the application, run the code and see that count is equal to one, count is equal to two, count is equal to three, four, five. What if I want to get this uh, number here, count is less than or equal to number. This number I would like to get from the user. I can do something. Scanner, scanner is equal to from one to whatever the number you want to print. Okay, if you want to get that uh, final number, you can use a scanner to collect the input from the user during the runtime. System dot in and here write down scanner dot next inch. Okay, next inch int number is equal to Int number is equal to scanner dot next int for the user to understand whether the user has to enter a number in between this input. I'll print out some statement like this enter any number, enter any number. So that by looking at this particular statement in the output, user will try to enter the number. That number will be captured into the next int and uh, that will go into the number and will iterate according uh, until the number is reached. Here I'll close the scanner of this scanner dot close to avoid the memory leak. As a best practice, I have to do that. Now this code, if you run this code in the output, it will ask for enter any number. If I give 12 means count is equal to one to 12 will be printed. Okay. If I give, let's say 25 count is equal to one to 25 will be printed. If I give some other thing like five, only count is equal to one to five will be printed. Count is equal to one count is equal to count three, four, five will be printed like that. Whatever the user enters the number till that number, the while loop will iterate and from number one onwards to till that number, the number will be printed along with this count colon that number. And uh, finally, when the count condition will become false, will come out of the while loop. So this is one Java program guys, uh, where, you know, where I have demonstrated to you how to, how to write a sample while loop. Okay. In the Java pro, how to use sample while loop in the Java programs. So if you get this kind of question in the interviews, try to write like this, try to utilize the scanner class uh, to collect the input from the user instead of making it very basic because this is a very basic question. Okay. So along with that, if you use scanner object and all those stuff and collect the input from the user and print the number of numbers from one to that particular number entered by the user, that will be a good uh, answer for the interviews. So hope guys, you got the answer for this question. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to answer one of the Java interview questions. That is, write a Java program to print the entered number in reverse order. For example, if you have entered a number like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the program should output something like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
okay whatever the number you enter to this java program it should print the reverse number of that entered number okay so we'll try to collect the input from the user the number as an input from the user and by writing some logic in the java program we are going to reverse that number and after reversing that we are going to print that in the output so let's practically do this so that i'll switch to eclipse id and for that i'll create a new class i'll just name this class as a class that in some random name with main method i'll create click on finish and here here guys i'll write the code like this okay that is a public static main and here i'll ask the user to enter a number and uh, collect that input from the user so for that i'll use a object of the scanner class scanner scanner is equal to scanner control shift go and here i'll write system dot in system dot in and after that i'll write down scanner system dot out dot print ln and here i'll write down enter any number enter any number that you want to reverse something like that and here enter n is equal to n stands for number let's say scanner dot next int i'll say scanner dot next int after that what i will do now i got the number okay from the user that number i have to reverse it i print in the output console for that i'll write a while loop saying n is not equal to 0 while this n is not equal to 0 and also the resultant uh, reversed number rn okay rn or r i can say reversed number r stands for reverse right that i'll set to 0 first okay now after this in the while loop when n is not equal to 0 if the entered if the user has not entered if the user has given some number that particular number is not equal to 0 then what i am going to do is i am going to say n percentile n percentile 10 okay what will happen for example assume that if the user has entered some number like this 1 2 3 4 5 here assume that in that 1 2 3 4 5 is the 1 2 3 5 4 5 is equal to 0 no so we'll go inside the while loop and here 1 2 3 4 5 percentile 10 so the reminder after dividing this number by 10 what is the reminder definitely 5 will be the reminder that reminder i'll add it to digits okay i'll say d also d for digit okay d for digit so here after dividing this 1 2 3 4 5 by 10 let's uh, for example let's assume that 1 2 3 4 5 is the number and you are dividing the number by 10 what is the reminder that will come 1 2 3 4 times you can divide by 10 so the reminder will definitely come as 5 so 5 will go here into d now here i'll write down r is equal to the reversed number r is equal to okay r into r into 10 for now r is 0 0 into 10 is 0 only plus d i'll say okay r into r multiplied by 0 into 10 r multiplied by uh, sorry r multiplied by 10 plus d r multiplied by 10 r multiplied by 10 means current value of r is 0 0 into 10 means 0 only plus d means d is 5 so 5 will go and fall into r and before this while condition is checked i'll try to divide the number n is equal to n divided by 10 i will say the next number should not be 1 2 3 4 5 here the next number should be how many times you can divide this uh, 1 2 3 4 5 with 10 1 2 3 4 times so here n will become n will become 1 2 3 4 and here we got the result as 5 now uh, r into 10 0 into 10 is 0 plus d d is 5 so r is also 5 now and here n divided by 10 means 1 2 3 4 5 divided by 10 will give you the how many times you can divide this number by 10 1 2 3 4 times so n will become 1 2 3 4 that 1 2 3 4 is equal to 0 no again you will go inside the while loop and this time 1 2 3 4 modulus 10 1 2 3 4 only will be there guys 1 2 3 4 modulus 10 5 is already gone right 1 2 3 4 modulus 10 so it will give you 4 guys here you will get 4 this time 4 will go into d and here already r is 5 5 into 10 is 50 50 plus 4 is 54 it will become 54 now and now again n divided by 10 1 2 3 4 divided by 10 how many times you can divide uh, n? 1 2 3 4 by 10 123 times now n will become 123 1 2 th uh, 23 is not equal to 0 again we'll go inside the while loop and 123 modulus 10 123 modulus 10 that will give you 3 here that will give you 3 here d will become 3 here r is already 54 54 into 10 is 540 
plus 3, 543, it will become the resultant is 543 will store into R. And here, n divided by 10. n is 123 divided by 10. How many times you can divide 123 by 10? 12 times. So 12 will go into n. 12 is not equal to 0. Again, we'll go inside the while loop. And 12, 12 modulus 10. If you divide the 12 by 10, you'll get the remainder as 2. 2 will go into D. And here, 543 is R. 543 into 10 is 5430 plus 2. That will become 5432. Then it will come to n divided by 10, 12 divided by 10. How many times you can divide the 12 by 10? One time only, right? One time. So 1 will be remaining. 1 will go to n. 1 is not equal to 0, still true. 1 modulus 10, you will get the remainder as 1 only. And here r into 10, 5432 into 10 will become 54320 plus 1 will become 54321. That 54321 will go into r. And n divided by 10. 1 divided by 10. How many times you can divide this 1 by 10? 0 times. n will become 0 finally. 0 is not equal to 0 is uh, false. will come out of the while loop. And here you can print out system.out.println. Reversed number is colon. What is the reverse number? This r. Whatever the r is holding 54321, that is the reverse number. Print r. And here finally, you just close the scanner object. You are already getting a warning message saying resource leak scanner is never closed. Scanner dot scanner dot close. You say that's it. Okay. Now run the code. Right click run as Java application. Right click run as Java application. Enter any number will come. In the number, if you give the number as one two three four five, you will get reverse number is five four three two one. You see, we are able to solve the problem. Right. So the Java program that they are asking us is to write the Java program to print the entered number in reverse order. So whatever the end number that you enter, that will be reversed. No matter what type of enter number you will get. For example, 6, 1, 9, 3, 2, 8. I press enter, you see, 8, 2, 3, 9, 1, 6 should come. 8, 2, 3, 9, 1, 6. The number is properly getting reversed, guys. So hope, guys, you got the logic, uh, you know, uh, for how to programming log logic, how to Reverse the entire number by the user. This is the logic you have to write. If you understand this logic, you can easily reverse a number entered by the user and print in the output console like this. Okay. So, hope guys, you got the answer for this question with practical demonstration. So, that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello, all. Welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to answer one of the Java interview questions. That is, write a Java program to demonstrate the usage of break statement inside while loop. Let me answer this question with practical demonstration. So if you don't use the break statement inside any loop like while loop, for loop, whatever the loops. So what happens here is the while loop will iterate until the condition of that while loop becomes false. When while loop condition finally becomes false, then only will come out of the while loop. But what if based on some condition, apart from the while condition, based on some other condition, if you want to exit the while loop in between, then we have to use the break statement inside it. So how to use a break statement and how to exit the while loop in between before the while loop condition actually becomes false that I'm going to show you practically by writing the code. For that, I'll switch to Eclipse ID and create a new class. Okay, I'll just name this class as class 14, let's say, with some main method, some random name I gave for the class and with main method I created. Inside this, inside this, I'm going to uh, create some program like uh, int i is equal to 1, while i is less than or equal to, you know, i less than or equal to 100, I'm saying. Okay, while i is less than or equal to 100, here system dot out dot print ln. Here I'll print i colon the value of i I'll print. Okay, the value of i. Now here I'll write a condition. Okay, so here guys, if I say i plus plus, what will happen? Generally, if I say i plus plus, by default, what will happen here is here initially i is 1 until i becomes 100. Okay, After, uh, while going through this iteration, this while loop will iterate how many times? 100 times, okay, because i plus plus is happening. So initially i is 1, 1 less than or equal to 100 is true. 
will go inside the while loop and i colon one will be printed then i will become two two less than or equal to 100 again true i two will be printed i will become three three less than or equal to 100 again true three will be printed and so on so on so on i becomes 100 100 less than or equal to 100 100 will be printed i i colon 100 will be printed now i becomes 101 101 is neither less than nor equal to 100 then the condition of the while loop becomes false then we come out of the while loop after printing the numbers from 1 to 100 issues you see here guys i starting from i1 to i100 after printing all these numbers from 1 to 100 we were able to exit the while loop we were able to exit the while loop okay when only when the while condition finally becomes false okay until the while conditions become false we keep on iterating the while loop and keep on printing the things in the output what if i write some condition like this if if i is double equal to if i is equal to let's say 7 then simply come out of the while loop here break statement if this condition is satisfied apart from this condition if you want to stop the while loop in between uh, you see this while loop will iterate 100 times but this time it's not going to happen because before this condition becomes false i have written another condition where if i becomes 7 then break this while loop you have to exit the while loop if this condition is satisfied that means before 1 to 100 got printed 1 to 7 will be printed here guys but the moment 7 i becomes 7 7 equal to 7 will happen and break statement will take you out of the while loop so if i run this code you see that 1 to 100 will not be printed only up to 7 will be printed why because initially i is 1 1 less than or equal to 100 is true so system dot order print ln i colon 1 that is i colon 1 will be printed here 1 is equal to 7 is false so break statement will not be executed so it will not come out of the while loop break statement will not break the loop in this case because condition is not satisfied of the if condition i plus plus i will become 2 2 less than or equal to 100 is 2 i colon 2 will be printed 2 is not equal to 7 so break statement break will not break the while loop so i will become 3 condition is true i colon 3 will be printed 3 is not equal to 7 break it will not break the while loop 4 4 less than or equal to 100 is uh, true again i colon 4 will be printed 4 is not equal to 7 i will become 5 5 less than or equal to 100 is true i colon 5 will be printed 5 is not equal to 7 hence break will not happen and i will become 6 6 less than or equal to 100 true again i colon 6 will be printed 6 is not equal to 7 i will become 7 7 less than or equal to 100 true again i colon 7 will be printed and here the first the first time in the iteration in the, all this iteration i became 7 7 equal to 7 is satisfied the inner condition of this while loop has been you know uh, satisfied it became true and because of that we went inside the if block and break statement got executed the moment break statement get executed it will break the while loop and will come out of the while loop guys and that's the reason right you will get 1 to 7 only will be printed i colon 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 will be printed it will not print up to 100 it will not go to its maximum capacity because because of one condition inside the while loop we have written a break statement that is going to exit this while loop that is going to break and exit this while loop when that particular condition is satisfied so okay, this is one of the sample program okay uh, that you can answer in the interviews if you get this kind of question that is write a java program to demonstrate the use of break statement inside the while loop if you want to premier uh, based on some other condition if you want to exit the while loop until the actual condition of the while loop becomes false then we generally use break break will break the while loop and come out of the while loop if such kind of inner condition becomes satisfied and the break statement got executed as shown in the program okay that's the answer for this question guys so that's all for this session thank you bye bye hello all welcome to this session in this session i am going to answer one of the java interview questions that is write a java program to demonstrate the usage of break and continue statements inside a while loop. Let me answer this question with practical demonstration. So, when you write the Java program using a while loop, the while loop will iterate, completely it iterate any number of times until the while condition becomes false. Until the condition becomes false, while loop will keep iterating. That's what I am saying. But inside that while loop, if you use either break or continue statement, for example, if you use break statement and uh, that break statement, when it is triggered inside a while loop, it will take you out of the 
while loop completely. Okay, before the condition of the while loop gets false itself, the break statement will break the while loop and take you outside of the while loop and further iterations will be cancelled. Whereas another statement is also there in place of the break statement inside the while loop, you can also use a continue statement. When that particular continue statement gets executed inside the while loop, only the current iteration that is currently running will be cancelled. The upcoming iterations will be still continued. That's why the name they have given as continue. It will continue the next iterations, but it will cancel the current running iteration where the continue statement got executed. While break statement, when it gets executed inside the while loop, before the while loop, while condition becomes false itself, you will come, come out of the while loop by canceling all the upcoming iterations, current and upcoming iterations, okay? Wherever it got occurred, you will come out of the while loop. But continue statement, unlike break statement, will only cancel the current iteration and further iterations will still be continued, okay? Next further iterations will be continued, only the current iteration will be cancelled, okay? And uh, until the while loop actual condition becomes false, the other, uh, uh, other remaining iterations will be continued until the while condition actually becomes false, okay? Continue statement only will break the current, only will cancel the current iteration, not the upcoming iterations, okay? Upcoming iterations will still continue until the while condition becomes false. Okay. So that's the difference between break and continue and how to use this break and continue inside the while loop. I'm going to show you practically so that you will understand the answer for this uh, question in a better way. For that, I'll switch to Eclipse ID and create a new class here, guys. I'll create a new class. I'll just name this class as a class, uh, let's say class 15, some random name. Click on main method here. I'm going to write the logic for the while loop. I'll show you without break and continue statements how the while loop will run. I'll show you first. Int i is equal to 1. While this i is less than or equal to 10, I'll say. While i is less than or equal to 10. Here I'll simply write down system.out.println. System.out.println. i. I'll print the value of i. After that, I'll increment the value of i. The normal way you write the code, right? So what happens here? Initially, i is 1. 1 less than or equal to 10, true. So 1 will be printed, I will become 2. Condition is true, 2 will be printed. I will become 3, condition is true, 3 will be printed. 4, for condition 4 less than or equal to 10 is true, 4 will be printed. I becomes 5, condition is still true, 5 will be printed. I will become 6, condition is true, 6 will be printed. 7, 7 is condition is true, 7 will be printed. 8, condition is still true, 8 will be printed. 9, condition is true, 9 will be printed. 10, 10 less than or equal to 10, still true, 10 will be printed. I will become 11 now. 11 is neither less than 10 nor equal to 10. The condition has finally became false, will come out of the while loop. So 1 to 10 will be printed. Starting from 1 to 10 will be printed in the output. This is fine. So far, so good. What if I write the code like this? If, if I is equal to 5, then break. I will write this like break. So, an inner condition I have written inside the while loop using the if block. When this condition gets satisfied, the break statement will be executed. And with before the actual while loop condition becomes false only, will come out of the break statement will break the while loop in this case. See here what happens. I is 1. 1 less than or equal to 10 is true. It will go inside the while loop. 1 will be printed. 1 is not equal to 5. Break statement won't be executed. Hence, I plus plus 2 will happen. True again. 2 will be printed. 2 is not equal to 5. False. So break statement will not be executed. 3. 3 less than or equal to 10. 3 will be printed. 3 is still not equal to 5. Break statement will not be executed. 4. four uh, condition is true. 4 will be printed. 4 is not equal to 5. Break statement will not be executed. I becomes 5. 5 less than or equal to 10. True. 5 will be printed. Here for the first time in this fifth iteration, the value of I became 5. 5, five equal to 5 is true. So we'll go inside the if block and break statement will be executed. And because of the break statement got executed after printing 5, because of the break statement got executed, uh, from here onwards, the current iteration and upcoming iterations will be cancelled. Break statement will take you out of the while loop before the actual condition becomes false. Before all the right iterations run, up to five iterations only it run, that too in the middle of that fifth iteration, the break statement has break the while loop and take you, took you out of the while loop. You see, only one to five will be printed. Only one to five will be printed. Right. In place of break, if I say continue, what will happen? In place of break, if I put continue here, what will happen? 
let's see what will happen. So int i is equal to 1, 1 less than or equal to 10 is true. 1 will be printed, 1 will be printed, not equal to 5. So continue statement will not be executed. 1 already got printed, i became 2, condition is true, 2 will be printed, condition is false, continue statement has not been executed. 3, condition is true, 3 will be printed, Con uh, condition is not true, continue statement will not be executed. It will become 4, condition is true, 4 will be printed. 4 is not equal to 5, continue statement will not be executed. i becomes 5, 5 less than or equal to 10 is true, 5 will be printed. 5 equal to 5 is true, 5 equal to 5 is true, continue statement will be executed and it will cancel the current iteration. This statement from here to here will not be executed. After the continue, whatever the lines are coming, it will not be executed. So the value of i is not incremented. So 5 less than or equal to next iterations will continue. Again, i is 5 only. Again, 5 will be printed. It will go into infinite loop, guys. You see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5, 5. You see, initially, initially, if you see, guys, I don't know whether I can show, but it started printing from 5, but, you know, a lot of iterations. That's the problem, guys. Before this value of i is checked, better to increment the value of i. Then the program will work fine. If you provide the i++ plus plus after the continue statement, right, that will be a problem. So now let's see what will happen in this case. Uh, not like this. I++ plus plus I should not write here. Uh, what I have to do is before this, uh, when this condition becomes true, right, in that you write I++ plus plus. here also you write I++. Plus plus, okay. That is the way of writing the code, guys. Now tell, now let me tell you it will not go to, go to the infinite loop. What will happen in this case? I is 1. 1 less than or equal to 10 is true. will go inside the while loop. 1 will be printed. 1 equal to 5 is false. will not go inside the if block. I will become 2. 2 less than or equal to 10 is true. 2 will be printed. 2 is not equal to 5. This code will not be executed. I will become 3. 3 less than or equal to 10 is true. 3 will be printed. 3 will be printed. 3 not equal to 5. So this condition is false. So it will not go inside the if loop. If condition and I will become 4. 4 less than or equal to 10 is true. 4 will be printed. 4 not equal to 5. Hence this code will not be executed. I will become 5 finally. 5 less than or equal to 10, 5 will be printed. 5 equal to 5. For the first time, 5 is becoming, 5 is equal to, i is equal to 5. Okay, the condition is matching. We'll go inside the if block. The value of i is incremented to 6 now. And continue statement will cancel the current iteration. And here, 6 less than or equal to 10. 6 less than or equal to 10. What will happen here? 6 less than or equal to 10, 6 will be printed. Okay, so... Instead of writing this print statement here, I'll write somewhere here so that you'll understand the difference, guys, okay? Here I'll print, uh, I'll write the print statement. Then what will happen? Let's see, okay? i is equal to 1, 1 less than and equal to 10 is true. We'll go inside the while loop. 1 is not equal to 5. This, this will not happen. So 1 will be printed. i++ plus plus will happen. i++ plus plus means i will become 2. 2 less than or equal to 10. 2 less than or equal to 10. 2 is not equal to 5. This code will not be executed. 2 will be printed and i will become 3. 3 less than or equal to 10. Condition is true. 3 not, not equal to 5, so this block will not be executed. 3 will be printed. 1, 2, 3 already got printed. I became 4. 4 less than or equal to 10 is true. We'll go inside the while loop. 4 is not equal to 5. This code will not be executed and 4 will be printed here. I became 5. 5 less than or equal to 10. True again. 5 equal to 5 also true. We'll, we'll go inside that. I plus plus happened. That means I became 6 now. I became 6 now. And continue statement has cancelled this. It has not printed the value of I as 5 i value 5 is not printed because uh, it cancelled the current iteration and uh, i plus plus already happened so i became 6, 6 less than or equal to 10, true again, 6 equal to 5 is false, 6 will be printed, 7, true, false, 7 will be printed, 8, true, false, 8 will be printed, 9, true, false, 9 will be printed, 10, 10 less than or equal to 10 is still true, false here, 10 will be printed, i will become 11 here, 11 less than or equal to 10 is false, will come out of the while loop. You see, one of the iteration is cancelled. To prove that, if I run the code here, you will see up to 1, 2, 3, 4 got printed, 5 has not printed because continue statement has cancelled. This is a proof that continue sta statement has cancelled the current iteration. And it's better when you, before you uh, use the continue, right, increment it. Otherwise, this i++ plus plus will not happen because it will cancel the current iteration. i will be always 5 and we will go into infinite loop. This is a proper way of writing the, using the continue statement inside the while loop. So, before the statement, uh, plus uh, do incrementation. And if you want to print the value of i, after that continue statement, you try to print. Don't put that before the continue statement so that you will not understand uh, how it is canceling the current iteration. So 1, 2, 3, 4, you see 5 is not printed because that iteration when i became 5, right? Okay, i became 6 here and continue statement has not 
allowed it, allowed the program to print five year, right? Not allowed the program to print a five or whatever it is. The current iteration got cancelled and six and six onwards it got printed. Okay. So when I run the code, you see one, two, three, four, and five is not there, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Only one iteration got cancelled, further iterations are not cancelled. This is what I was saying in the beginning of the session, guys, when I'm before I started uh, demonstrating this program for you. Write a Java program to demonstrate the usage of break and continue statements with a uh, inside the while loop. Before the while loop condition becomes false, if the break statement gets executed, it will take you out of the while loop completely by canceling all the current and upcoming iterations. It will cancel. But in place of break, if you put continue in the while loop, okay, only the current iteration will be cancelled and further uh, iterations will still continue until the while condition really becomes false. Okay. So this is what is the answer, guys. Uh, hope you got the answer for this uh, question with practical demonstration in this session. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, all. Welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to answer one of the Java interview questions. That is, write a Java program to print the alphabets using a for loop. Let me answer this question with practical demonstration. So. Let's get started. I'll show you the different ways of using for loop for printing the alphabets in Java. The first is the simplest way where I am going to create a new class. I'll just name this class as class 17. And in this class 17, I'll create a main method. And in this main method, I am going to create a for loop. I'll simply say for char C is equal to in single quotes A, put a semicolon and say C less than or equal to C less than or equal to this Z and semicolon. I'll say C plus plus. This is the simplest way to iterate through the alphabets. Starting with A, you have declared this variable C with the char data type. So you can assign single characters surrounded with some alphabet you can give and the ending alphabet should be Z and you should increment that after A, B should come, then C should come like that. It will go till C is equal to Z behind that Z, it should not print. It should come out of the loop. So I'll simply print out system dot out dot print here and see that's it. Okay. Or I can also say something like this uh, print in the same line. I would like to print with uh, some small space given so that you can see the output in the same line. Instead of printing in every line the alphabets, the alphabets will be printed with space in the same line. You see, these are the alphabets, guys. We got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z are the alphabets. Okay. Like this, we can get this one approach. What is the other approach? There may be other ways people can write the program. This is the simplest way the people can write the program for printing the alphabets from A to Z. Other way is like, let's say you are taking some int i is equal to some ASCII value of this a you take, ASCII value of this a you take. So here go to this, uh, open the browser and type ASCII table, ASCII table, search for ASCII table. In the ASCII table, look for that capital letter A and see what is ASCII number associated with that capital letter A, 65 is a number. So what I will do here is I will say for int i is equal to 65, less than i less than uh, i sorry semicolon i less than or equal to so z will have 90 up to 90 i plus plus i'll say and here i'll write down system dot out dot print ln system dot out dot print ln so print i if you print i 65 to 90 will be printed but convert that ascii number into character using char uh, type casting use the type casting like this and uh, the, instead of 65 capital A should be printed. Okay. Here 65 will be converted to the ASCII equivalent capital A. Okay. Now run the code and see it will run. It will print in the new lines guys. If you don't use print and space, you don't use it will print in the new lines. A to Z should be printed for us. You see coming starting from capital A to Z got printed. There's another way of printing the alphabets from A to Z. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Okay. We got it. And here you can do something. You can give a space. If you want in the same line, you can give a space and change this print ln to print. The same thing will happen, you know, where alphabets will be printed in the same line for you. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. These are the different ways 
you can follow guys either you can follow this way or this way both the ways you can get the characters printed from alphabets printed from a to z okay so run this code you see this loop will work in the same way this loop will work in the same way and here uh before this i'll write a print print ln so that uh, we'll get in two lines instead of single line you see a to z got printed in the, using the first logic a to Z got printed using the second logic. Both will work, guys. Whether if you are comfortable with this, you can go with this. Or if you are comfortable with this, go with this. Any of this program you can use for demonstrating, okay, as an answer for this kind of questions that you get in the interviews. Write a Java program to print the alphabets using the for loop. Either you can uh, demonstrate this program or you can demonstrate this program. Both will work fine. So, hope, guys, you got the answer for this question with practical demonstration in this session. So, that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to answer one of the Java interview questions. That is, write a Java program to demonstrate for each loop. Let me answer this question with practical demonstration. First of all, for each loop in Java programs is specially used for working with arrays and collections framework. Okay. In other areas, we may use other loops like while loop, do while loop, for loop. But coming to the for each loop, it is specially designed for working with arrays and collections framework. So if I have to write a Java program to demonstrate for each loop, definitely we have to use either arrays or collections framework to demonstrate this for each loop. In this session, as an answer for this question, I'm going to demonstrate multiple ways or multiple places where we can use for each loop in our Java programs. But you can answer, you can use one of them while answering this question, or you can use multiple things and you can explain and, you know, you can demonstrate multiple programs or write multiple Java programs containing multi, um, containing the usage of each loop with arrays and collections framework. Okay. So let's begin by switching to the Eclipse ID here. I'm going to create a new class. I'll just create a new class here. I'll just name this class as uh, class 18. Class 18. Main method. First, I'll show you how to use for each loop with arrays. Okay. Int integer array AR is equal to, I'll give the shortcut representation of the array like 9, 5, 1, 7, 8, 6, 2, 3, 4. Like this, some values I have given randomly. Okay. Now, if I have to iterate through this integer array, we can either use while loop. We can also use the uh, do while loop. We can use for loop also, but the best loop for using with arrays is for each loop, guys. Okay. Whenever you have the chance to use for each loop over any other loops with arrays, you have to give the preference to the for each loop. So I'm going to use for each loop. It looks similar to the for loop only for loop for keyword with a circular bracket starting of the for loop, ending of the for loop. Here, you have to make a decision. Inside the circular brackets, you have to specify one data type. So that data type is nothing but if you take any individual element here, for example, either you take pi or six or two, individually speaking, not together, individually, if you take this element, this is of which type? It's of int type, right? It's of int data type. So write int here and mention, let's say element uh, A, E, anything you can write there. You can give any variable name and say, give the name of the array here. After colon symbol, you have to give the name of the array. So here you have to declare a variable with individual data type of this element, okay? Individually, if you see an element, one of the element you take like two or eight or nine or seven, you take something and what is a individually, what is the data type here in? Like that you have to de decide the data type and after that you have to specify the variable, provide the colon symbol and after that you have to specify the array name. So then you have to use system.out.println e. This is how very simple it is, guys. Just run the code. This is how we have to use the for each loop, I'll explain how the iteration will happen and how the values of the arrays are getting printed. I'll tell you how the elements of the array are getting printed from nine to four. Everything is got printed nine, five, one, seven, eight, six, two, three, four. But how the for each loop will get executed, I'll tell you now. Just understand what I'm trying to explain. So when you start running this code, the array will be created and initialized with all these elements. Okay. Then it will go to the for loop where it will check in this particular array. Do we have any elements? Yes. The selected things are the elements in that. What is the first element? Nine is the first element in the selected element. So nine will be assigned to E and will go inside the for each loop. Since one element from the array is assigned to this variable, that means we'll go inside the for each loop. And here 
that element which is holding nine will be printed. So nine will be printed here. Then after what happens again, the control will come back here to the array and any other elements left out. Yes, these are the highlighted elements in that. What is the first element five in the remaining elements five is the five will be assigned to here. And since it is assigned, we'll go inside the for each loop and here E means five will be printed. Okay. Then after that control will come back here and what are the remaining elements? These are the remaining elements in the first element is one, one will be assigned and one will be printed. Okay. And after that remaining elements, these are the remaining elements in that seven is the first element. Seven will be assigned and seven will be printed here when you print each. Then remaining elements, these are the remaining elements in that eight is the first position. Eight will be assigned, eight will be printed here. Remaining elements, remaining elements, these are the remaining elements for array. When you say AR means the remaining elements in the array are six, two, three, four. In that six will be assigned, six will be printed here. Then remaining elements, two, three, four, in the first element, two will be assigned and two will be printed. In the remaining elements of the array, AR, three, four are there in the three will be assigned and three will be printed. In the remaining elements of the array, in the remaining elements of the array, only four is left out, four will be assigned and four will be printed. Are there any other elements in the array after four? No elements. So we'll come out of the for each loop. This is how the, this is what will happen guys. And if you want to all these elements to be printed in the same line, instead of using print ln, you use print and here provide some space also. That's okay. After printing that uh, elements, right? This kind of output you will get nine, five, one, seven, eight, six, two, three, four will be printed in the output. Okay. So this is how we can use for each loop with arrays guys. Similarly, this program, you can give an answer for this question. If you get this kind of question in the interview, you, you can give this particular program as an answer for this question or you can also go with the collections framework and demonstrate one of the example from the collections framework in collections framework you can take anything like array list has set okay anything you can take i'll go with the array list i'll go with the array list i'll create an array list here from collections framework array list a list is equal to new array list i'll create an object for the array list class like this and here import this array list from java.util package and after that uh, this array list is of generic class type and we have to specify the type parameter here in the less than greater than symbols to specify which type of objects you can store into the array list. Uh, only objects can be stored. We cannot give int data type here in the array list. Okay. The type type parameter cannot be specified as int because primitive data types kind of elements cannot be stored into the array list. Instead, you can go with integer if you want. Okay. Now add the elements to the array list using a list dot. There are many ways to add the elements to the array list. One of the way I'll show you. Add, I'll add the elements like this nine. A list dot. Instead of writing in multiple lines, I am writing in a single line. You can also write in multiple lines, guys, like this. You can also write like this, but to, just to save the space right of the program, I'm writing like this. Okay. A list dot add off. A list dot add off. A list uh, dot add off. Uh, let's say one. Okay. A list dot add off seven. A list dot add off uh, eight. I think this many elements are enough, guys. I added up to one, two, three, four, five elements. That's okay. Or you can write these statements in separate lines also. That's also fine. If you want to save the lines, you can write in single line, but uh, otherwise you can, you know, semicolon is there, which will separate the lines anyhow. Now, if you want to iterate through all these elements of this array list and print the elements of the array list, we can use for each loop. For each loop can also be used with collections. For each loop is specially designed. You can also use normal for loop here because this element will be stored at the index zero, index one, index two, index three, index four. I can use a normal for loop, but the better loop if you talk about when you are dealing with arrays or collections framework is a for each loop. So here, how to decide the type of the elements here? Each and every element, if you take either nine or five or one or seven individually, if you take of which type they are, they are of integer type. So here we have to write integer here, guys. Integer i colon. You can give e also. I also anything you can give and the name of the array list you have to give a list is the name of the array uh, array list. Okay. A list is the name of the array list. Array list is from collections framework guys. Uh, while arrays are fixed in size, array list is, you know, flexible in size or global in size. So system dot out dot print ln simply print the value of uh, element uh, I print the element I. So it works for each loop with array list also works in the same way. So here, when you are running the code, what will happen when you are running the code here also, Print ln I'm saying for now. Later I can convert if required. That's okay. But I, otherwise it's not required. So what happens here is like, you know, uh, it will first create an array list of uh, type parameter as integer and uh, generic class is uh, array list generic class. Okay. Which has a type parameter specified beside that. Okay. So then next thing is that we can add all these elements. 
9 is uh, added first, then 5 second, 1 third, 7 fourth, and 8 fifth position. Okay. Now, if I say for each loop, here A list means 9, 5, 1, 7, 8 will be there. In that, what is the first element 9? 9 will be assigned here. 9 integer object element will be assigned to I. And when you print I, 9 will be printed in the output. After that, again A list will check any other array list elements are there. Any other elements are stored in the array list? Yes, 5, 1, 7, 8 is there. In that first element, 5 will be assigned and 5 will be stored, printed here. Then any other elements, 1, 7, 8 in that 1 will be assigned and will go inside the for each loop and 1 will be printed. Object 1 will be printed. Then A list will check any other elements left out in the array list 7, 8. In that 7 will be assigned. 7 will be object 7 will be printed here. Any other elements? Yes, only 8 is there. 8 will be assigned and will go inside the for each loop and 8 will be printed. After 8, any other elements? No. So we'll come out to the for each loop. This is how the for each loop will work with the collections framework. One of the examples I took from the collections framework is the arrays. You see 951178, 951, 9, 5, 1, 7, 8, 9, 5, 1, 7, 8 got printed. So either this program or this program you can demonstrate, guys, uh, in the interviews, okay, when you get this kind of question. So hope, guys, uh, I've answered this question for you with practical demonstration in this session. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye-bye.